to And Here's Modi. How are you, everybody? <clears throat> Eric Newman's here. Periel is here. We are. It's a Monday morning. Usually we do this Friday afternoon, right before the weekend, and there's like a different energy. But I think we're going to bring that energy back, no? Yeah, it's great. Okay. I love Monday um, first thing. See. I love that you're wearing sleeves. Thank I, you. I, I did Thank that Thank you very for much. You. Of course, there's a tear right above your left breast, but otherwise we're good. <laughs> I and think that's what makes it better. Thank you, Eric. I'm here with Eric <laughs> Newman, ladies and gentlemen. And just, to, just so you know, Eric Newman is a, uh, a, a friend. I would say a friend. Wow, Mori. Wow. Is that a good one? Yeah. And Eric is a guy that for the past six years, seven Nine. years. Nine years, wow, has been opening for me at different events from everything from the most Hasidic ultra orthodox event. Thank you. Event. Good. Thank you. Good. She, she's here to make sure that I, I w if anything Jewish comes out of my mouth, she just makes sure it gets translated. <laughs> and the audience has been thanking them, uh, uh, thanking her. Um, Eric's been open for me from everything from a Hasidic um, events to completely irreligious uh, corporate events and. You've been you've been getting better and better. You've Thanks, been getting. Mark. You've had some nice bombs too. It's I've nice. Had, I've had big bombs. We've had Danny Cohen on, which we enjoy. You know, whenever I do the show, me the producer, we we love it. Watch watching him. And then, the good thing about Eric is once in a while there's a bomb, so it's fun to watch a good. It's a, always good to see a good bomb. Oh, it's the best for comedians, especially, right? Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. But Eric has a talent of pulling the audience together. There's an audience, they just sat down, they just ordered drinks, they're not sure who came, are they happy with the table, they're not happy with the table, they're, what should we order, is it kosher, it's not kosher, and Eric is up there working through it, organizing them so that whoever's next has the audience on a platter. Here you go, here's a perfect audience for you, and it's a talent, it's a Thanks, gift. Tony. Yeah, and honestly, like, I, I sort of like, resisted it at first because it's obviously it's it's not the ideal spot in comedy nobody wants to do it right but i realized doing it has made me so much better because it's just a really hard situation so and like you know you've given me so many opportunities over the years to do right that, so. we had mike vebecki on for the for the for the chazaka episode that's the third <laughs> episode chazaka means strength once you do something three times mean? once you do something three times it, it's a it's strengthened mm. You know, so once you like, go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the right from the word strength. Uh, we had Mike Vecchi on for the third episode, and uh, we were talking about that how important it is to because I also was a host and at the cellar and all that, and um, and uh, it, it makes you stronger, and you definitely uh, and you definitely uh, became stronger that way. I want to talk about the pandemic and okay. your comedy during okay. the pandemic. That's when Eric, sh everybody else, they. they, they Pivoted the pivot. My pivot was the characters and Instagram and all of that. And you were doing shows in the park and on rooftops. I was, yeah. You were the king of it. I wouldn't call myself the king, but I was definitely doing it. Well, the thing is, and like I watched you, right? Like you grew exponentially in the first few months of the pandemic. I felt like the pandemic was a time where it was like sort of either like make you or break you, yeah. right? Because like I think people who really weren't so committed to succeeding in comedy to begin with saw this as an opportunity to just be like, okay, I have the perfect excuse now. I can just to go bail away out, for to a bail year out. and a half, right? But, but we, you know, but everybody knows who really wants it, right? So, like, I said to myself, I'm like, who knows how long this is going to last, like you did, Modi. And I was like, I got to find a way to adjust. And I have to find a way to even, like, make myself more significant in the comedy scene. So, I did that. I stayed at the cellar, you know, the whole time when we were doing those olive tree shows, right? You came to see a couple of epic bombs. Just so people know what we're talking about. So, hold on. So, during the <laughs> pandemic... Um, the comedy, once people like settled a little bit, still no vaccine, people scared to death. There were comedy shows in the park and comedy shows on rooftops where people were like, okay, to be outside and you broke out of your pod. And you were the king of it. You were doing shows nonstop in the park and on roof. You even taped a special or something, no? Yeah, I did. I did one on a rooftop called Just a Phase. I did it. Uh, it, it was from mainly material I wrote for the first six months of the pandemic because I was in my apartment depressed and just writing stuff. So, But you went through a lot. You broke up with your girlfriend. I yep. hope I can say that. She broke up with me. That she would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> now, Eric is definitely not <laughs> Eric. <laughs> She's why I love him. It's why he's great for the road. <laughs> People have to understand when you're on the road with somebody, it's not even their act that's that important. It's the hang. 
Yeah, you, you're hanging with them a whole day, sometimes two days. You're in a hotel with them. It has to be somebody you can hang out with. Yeah. And he delivers on stage too. But Eric is funny and, and real. And yeah, so during the pandemic, you did. You even tried to do. Are you still doing a podcast? I just now we just launched our podcast. That's the first. I, I just I, I was like you, right? I didn't want to do it until I felt compelled to really do it. A hundred percent. What's yeah. the podcast called? Um, it's called Marcus and Eric learn stuff from smarter people. We just interview people who are like professionals in there because we're I'm so dumb and he is also so we just want to know things. You're not dumb because as soon as you know you don't know something, you're already smart, right? And you know you need help from somebody else, then you're already smart. Um, but I wanted to, so so Eric, just so people understand also when the pandemic began, I remember right before lockdown, I went away, but the week before. Or maybe a few days before, you and I met at the Comedy Cellar for lunch. Yeah, when Atel was there, right? Right. That was, yeah. We were there. We were sitting there having uh, having lunch. Now, the pandemic's about to happen. People feel it. And they're kind of getting prepared and not sure what to do. Now, keep in mind, Eric was a germaphobe way <laughs> before COVID. <laughs> way before COVID. Yeah. And he sat down. And people were just getting a little bit with the Purell and maybe. And Eric had... A bottle of Purell this big, <laughs> this big. Do you see the size of this thing? It's not the little squirter. It's a full <laughs> <laughs> squeezer. And Eric it had it on the table. So he he sits down whenever he has lunch with me, puts his down, does this, and leaves it on the table. And I'm looking at it the whole time. You remember? I had my eyes. I yeah. go, Eric. I need that, I think. He goes, here you go, Modi. Of course, the next day that you couldn't get them on the shelf and everybody's buying yeah. toilet paper. Remember, I ordered a 24-pack. Like, the second this thing hit, I ordered a 24-pack. And two days later, it was gone. So I gave you, I think, two or three bottles, right? You gave me you one. one. Don't bottle. go crazy. You gave me one <laughs> bottle. And it already had a few... <laughs> Out of it. So don't, don't, you don't, don't, don't overdo the story. Don't overdo the story. I had a good story, and that was it. And, um, and then, okay, so then... We move on. Eric is doing. Eric is the king of shows in the park and on rooftops. And now we're talking about end of May, June. The Orthodox Jewish world has just completely had it with COVID, and they're doing shows in the backyards, in the, in the, on boats. Remember on boats yeah, I remember, in yeah. basements. And I go, come here. Leave the squirrels alone. <laughs> Leave those stupid <laughs> squirrels alone. Stop telling them jokes, and come with me. Now, <laughs> the first gig I took him on to open for me was on a boat. Yeah. All Hasidic men. It was, um, it was a, I don't know, it was a fundraiser or a birthday party. It was a whole thing. It was for this company. It was an employee appreciation type of a thing. And Eric was on with me. And uh, scared to, Eric's wearing a mask. That two looked, masks. I think it was two, right? Look, your mask was the ugliest thing in the world. It looked I... like a diaper. It, it was so <laughs> horrible. It was like... It was denim and denim and straps and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, he wouldn't take it off. I had bad mask. You would have killed me the whole pandemic with my fashion, my mask fashion choices. You would have hated every. What mask I would I have. I, what do I mean? I would have. I spoke to you almost every other day. <laughs> I, know, I, you, I, know. I hated it. It's not. I would have. I hated it. <laughs> but here's the funny thing. So we're on this boat, and all these people come over, and they don't care about Corona. They're shaking hands. How are you? How are you? Eric's scared to death in the corner. No, don't come near me. Of course. When the four hot girls that are on the ship come over with the dresses, with the this, Eric is right. Hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? Good. No, yeah. Well, me, me and Modi work a lot together. Let me take this thing off my face. Let me take this thing on my face real quick. Mask is right out. He's making out with them in the bathroom. I'm kidding. He wasn't. wasn't. He tried to. <laughs> Eric, is one, Eric is one of those comedians. In the comedic world, there's the comedians that when the show is over, He's a single comic, and he 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 works he, now. He just did well in front of a room, and um, and especially now you're hosting at the Comedy Cellar, yeah. so they and you know how to host. You know how to make them love you and look forward to seeing you again. And after the show, whatever girl is around, Eric is one of those comedians that hits on girls. I do I, 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 politely. He's not disgusting. He's not filthy. He's no. sweet. It is a sweetness to him, and if it works, it works. And I want to tell you, you've been, you've been upgrading. <laughs> I've been doing okay. I've been doing okay. Well, the seller, it's funny, it's interesting, right? It's like I remember I talked to you because you were one of, you know, you you helped really get me into the seller, and uh, which I'm like, fuck, I appreciate so much. But I, you know, I remember thinking like, okay, Esty asked me, can you host? Because she needs hosts. And I remember I talked to you about, it, and you were like, host. 
just host like because it would have been so dumb to not do that because yeah. I'm there every single night literally and I know how to do the job and a lot of people don't want to and it's been great it's been like really good for my career you to do killed it. it and then when when the comedy cellar opened up slowly they were on top of everything. They followed every rule. Mm -hmm. They put plexiglass up, and they did all the things you had to do for COVID, and you were right there. Every single night, he opened the show. You can't imagine how hard it is to open a show behind plexiglass for a room that's a quarter full. I want to tell you, I went and I signed up for one of those, and I, I said, I'm going to wait this one out. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, couldn't. It was, it was too much of a Remember the one mental... you came to where it was, lo it was literally like five, six, seven audience members eating. I went up because I, I volunteered. Liz was like, who? Liz was doing the lineups at that point, and nobody wanted to go first. Of course, who wants to go cold in that plexiglass? They don't even know there's a show going on. Right. These audience members. So I said, I'll do it. I was like, I just want to get stronger. I don't care. I'll do it. I go did ahead. it. Remember this? And it was like seven audience members, like six comics at the table, and Louis, Louis and a CK. baby, and a baby, and a baby in the audience. A baby. Yeah. You remember that? When we, when we <laughs> say the audience really didn't know what was going on, now look, you couldn't advertise. We're doing a comedy show. It was advertised. Um, it's a uh, a dinner with funny friends. Yep, that's how they. D yeah. You were there. Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so and Eric was the champion of that, and uh, and you're there like every night. If you're not out somewhere, you're you're there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I was there. I was there almost every night, and it was, I mean, brutal, emotionally brutal. Like it was almost like abusing yourself, kind of sometimes. But like, better than staying home every yeah, night. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, that's what I was talking to Nick Griffin about this the other day. How the process was, we'd come home after our sets, feel terrible about ourselves, <laughs> wake up the next morning and be like, "Hey, Liz, can I come in again tonight?" It was like that was literally the process. It was just, you know. It was too much for me. I, 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 you're right. Well, comics during the pandemic had to figure out. The, the ones who weren't real were like, I'm sitting this out. Yep. I, in the beginning, was like, people call, hey, you want to do a podcast show? I'm like, nah, I don't think I'm going to. Then you realize it's not ending, and I was like the king of podcast yeah. shows. Yeah. I was doing like. And you killed it. I mean, you really killed it on social, man. Like, it was like, it was so good to watch. But I also want to say this just before. I don't want to let the podcast end before saying this. Like. What's really helped me get stronger as a comic has been just watching you like destroy like like because no seriously because I you know I've been opening for you for now like since 2012 and honestly like it's sort of humbling because I would like feel like I killed a lot of the time I'd be like oh I killed. And then I get off stage and I watch Modi and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. That's different. That's I'm going to tell you one story right now that's one of my favorite stories. Eric is amongst those comedians that if he gets four laps in a row, he comes <laughs> off the stage. I destroy. <laughs> I kill. I murdered. I was no. The, the, I do. I just. I killed. <laughs> and so one time he comes off the stage and I saw him. He goes, "Dude, I killed. Dude, I killed." <laughs> and I looked at him in the face. And I go, "They tolerated you." <laughs> was, I was. I go. They tolerated you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but now you understand what like what yeah. really do. Why well, never at the cellar? I realize like I never say I killed. I always go. Oh, the crowd was nice. The audience was great. What a great. They were great. You yeah. never say I killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just don't ever. Just, just, just never. It's not, you, you, sh you shouldn't be the one. You shouldn't be the one giving a, uh, a review of your act. <laughs> of course not. That's if hilarious. someone says to you, "Dude, you killed the set. Thank you so much." Yeah, they were a great audience. Pick yourself out. You're like, "I killed, destroyed, I murdered." Right. It especially, is the worst. especially since you see a tell get off stage and he was like, "Ah, that was okay." And you're like, "That was a nine point nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Now, Eric, um, I'm telling you. So, Eric's, you are finding your voice, kind of. You know, in the beginning, you, 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 when you do the comedy, you don't find your voice. When I, was, when I began doing comedy, I was just big, big, huge characters. There was mm -hmm. nothing about me, nothing about Jewish, mm -hmm. nothing about anything that, like, was a part of my life. And I'm still growing. I think every comic still grows and their voice changes. But your voice is coming out. One of your main things is your mother. Yeah, I talk about her a lot. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that works out. I hope you can pass that. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I do that more actually. I don't do it, like, for, the thing I'm still trying to find with particularly your audience is like how to, because I've evolved sort of past my mom's stuff now, but I still bring it back for the Jewish audiences because I feel like it's very relatable to them. So I'm sort of trying to find that line of like still being myself presently and still relating a lot to when I do shows with you. 
because I'm still because it's different. Like I've gotten a little darker in life now a little bit. I've you know I've been through stuff lately and you know. No, you're yeah. you're in a, you're in a lot of. Th- we had a schedule three times around your therapy schedule. <laughs> I have a lot of therapy going on. I'm doing it twice a week now. Yeah, it's a no. You've definitely grown as a person. Wait, but, can but, I ask a question? Why do you hope he gets past the mother stuff? I don't know. It's 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 not a joke. It's a real thing. Yeah, it is. Case in point. One time we were back in. It was the summer of God knows what year. I had a smart car. Okay. And oh, yeah. we, we drove to the Catskills. Okay. That's 65 miles plus. And then you're driving in the woods with no light to do a show Saturday night, which begins at 10 30, 11. So we get off and we're heading back by 12 30, 1 o'clock. His mom was, you gave her a story that we're staying in a hotel up there. But we're not. We're driving in a smart car on a road doing 75 miles an hour, driving home, and his mother's calling nonstop. And like, hey, mom, no, no, we're checking into the hotel. And I'm beeping the horn so she knows we're in a car. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, no. help, help. I'm screaming, help, help, help. Oh, yes, help. Mother. And his mom's on the phone. Uh, what, which, is, are you staying in a Western, which, which hotel are you guys yeah. in? I'm trying to find where the hotels are. It's a real thing. Yeah. Is mother, is which is hilarious because if my mom knew anything about Modi, she'd know Modi would never stay the night <laughs> there, Ever. around there. Whatever hotel is, is around there that's the best is not good enough for him. I so would there's no never. Way. Yeah. And then, then there was that one show your mother was in the front. The first time I met your mother, you were doing a fundraiser for your friend, friend who, who passed, passed away. away. Yep. Um, so, so you weren't doing fundraiser for him. You're doing fundraiser for his fun because he's dead. He doesn't need the money. Um, <laughs> For his family, <laughs> and then I get on stage, and uh, and it's his mother. And she's there, and I, she goes, "Modi." He introduces me, Modi, da da da, and he goes, "That's my mom over there." And I just, I just did ten minutes with his mother. <laughs> I go, "Now it all makes sense." <laughs> what did you do to this kid? What, what 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 have you done to this child? And but it's 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 a big part of my life. It's a big part of who I am, you know. So like I, you know, it's. Positive and negative, yeah. but it's a big part of who I am. So I would never be a comic without my mom. Like, there's no way. It just wouldn't happen. I mean, I would say so. that, you know, you and I know each other pretty well yeah. um, off stage, but you and your brother both seem to be doing quite well. Um, so your mom must have been something, right? Because she raised you pretty much alone, right? But neither of us are married, so she doesn't see it that way. That's never a sign yeah. of you doing well or that, not. That's, no, that's, that's probably a good so thing. <laughs> ridiculous ta- to say a, that. As, to a her Jew- it is. as a Jewish mother, I, yeah. I'm going to call your Jewish mother and I'm going no, to tell she, her. She wants, us, she, she wants me settled down. It's so just so you know, he lives with his brother in the, in the apartment. So during the pandemic, we would FaceTime or talk and about different things and different gigs that we're about to do and not doing and the whatever, all this stuff. And his brother's in the background <laughs> just chiming in, <laughs> just just giving what he thinks. So I renamed him to Chime in Newman. <laughs> Wait, is Chime in over there? <laughs> Chime in, is Chime in there? Eric's doing, Eric was, you, there's nothing you didn't try during the, during the quarantine. You live streamed and dead streamed and, <laughs> it was and dead what streamed, was man. the, uh, uh, every FaceTime and not time and you, and your brother's in the back going, you should do it this way. <laughs> Here's how you should do it. I said, go punch him in the face for me. Also, Chime in Newman sounds like a Hebrew name too. Totally. Which is Chime in Newman. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It feels like a Hebrew. It's hilarious, man. It yeah, really well, my, my brother's a really, really super smart, like my brother there's like a he's an entrepreneur he started his own business from i will stop you right now this podcast will not be about (laughs) discussing your brother that 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 will come to an abrupt end immediately (laughs) sit here and talk about chime and what's wrong with you um you are killing it on tiktok thanks i can't even grasp it i don't i we tried i get it it's i don't get it I don't but get it either, killing. honestly, b- because like it's the only social media platform I've had this type of success on, and I just—it's not like, true. You got twenty-two thousand viewers, uh, uh, f- followers on on Instagram, almost thirty. Wow! But yeah, but you're that, catching up to me, and and y- yeah, but but now, but like initially, don't it's the don't, only. don't do. First, you go thank God. Yeah, you say thank, thank God. God. Thank God. Don't don't, <laughs> don't give me a thank God. Thank yes, God. it's yeah. doing well. Go positive energy. Yeah, yeah. And then continue with it. Okay. Well, the thing is, I also so I started during the pandemic. I just started putting up clips. Um, I think it's become very clear to me that like the industry is not plucking me for anything, and that became 
overwhelmingly clear to me at some point. I'm like, I'm not going to be like, uh, I've auditioned for 10,000 late night sets in Montreal for nine years, callbacks and whatever. Like, I didn't get any of it. And it was always like, you're in contention. You're in the final four. I just never got anything. So I was like, okay. I was like, and the seller was a huge thing for me to get. It was the biggest thing I've ever gotten in my career so far. So like, but I realized I have to do my own thing. I have to build my own audience. And that's where we are in comedy at this point. That's w what the comedy business is, right? And like, what, what's your, own, your, 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 can I say your age? Yeah, I'm 34. I just turned 34. 34. A track. He's like, he's at that age where you decide whether I'm going to keep this going or lose it. <laughs> you now have to make a decision. Do I start taking pills to keep my hair? Do I start oh going to the gym? Oh, my God. No, no, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. No, right. no, no, no. I, I give advice about, yeah. You got to make sure you pull it together. Yeah. Otherwise, I, it I, falls apart fast. Oh, my God. I, You've I, seen comedians that just lose course. it. I walked up the stairs 10 flights to get here. That's not because of health. That's because you're obsessed with germs and elevator. No, don't no, like don't, don't, in don't try to pull your thing on me like this. Can Eric. we hear a little bit more about this germ thing? I it's fascinating. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like girl. Okay, so I had like a girl in my bed recently. Yeah. And she had her clothes on. Like she like came in with the clothes on, and Imagine I was like, no. you were like sitting on the subway, <laughs> like. Like, can we, uh, I tried to. I hope she went in and screwed, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Chiming. <laughs> I thought she passed He, he chimed right in. He, chi <laughs> he goes, no, no, she, she took an Uber here, so it's not as filthy. <laughs> Ugh. But the fact that we're bringing your brother up is so annoying to me right now. You but, brought yeah, him up. I know, my fault, my fault. Um, uh, you have to, you're developing now. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And you know who told me this? Larry Amaros, a big genius comedy writer. Now, you have a joke where you talk about your um, your biggest financial year mm -hmm. was your bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Gr <laughs> it's a great joke. It's, it's a funny. great joke. And he's like, my, you know, and it fits in with your mother's thing. And I know I'm in the wrong. You need to reword the joke. Yeah, because you tell me because it makes me look like I don't have money now, right? It makes you look like you don't have money, yeah, and yeah. you don't, and you don't. And don't forget now, people are seeing this clips and you're asking for a substantial amount of, you just booked the gig yeah. that you got more than you've ever made before. I'm not talking, I never talk prices. Yeah, definitely a lot more. And you, and you need to change. And don't forget, when you say something over and over and over, it brings that power into the universe. So you're up there saying, my best financial year was, whatever the joke is, reword it. To like, I'm doing this, that it used to be my best. Used to be my best, and right, you'll right, see. Right. You're saying it every night, sometimes three, four times a night, because he doesn't change his act that often. <laughs> so this joke is a is a is a is a stronghold in the act <laughs> for the past eighty years. What, what, and I'm just kidding. Yeah. But you need to change it and reword it to because yeah. you you you're doing well. I'm doing well. You are doing well. I'm starting to do well, yeah. For the tour that I'm doing, I he wasn't available for a few dates. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I'm excited for the tour, though, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, we're <laughs> so excited to find out what's going on with COVID and all this stuff. But we're, it's going to be, it's going to be absolutely amazing, and um, yeah. it's going to be fun cities and, uh, and and great audiences. That city winery show was great. City winery was amazing. We we did a show at yeah. city winery. What an amazing venue! Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I really liked it. And they loved you, and um, they always let me know how they thought about you. You oh know? yeah! Oh yeah! I get usually good reviews. Yeah. Okay. Especially the single. Hi, I'm not sure the guy that was before you, is he single? And then they send you the DMs of who's of who they have. I said yeah. no, he's not. I've been, single you know what's that. so funny? I've been getting just on this subject. I don't want to talk much about this, but I've been getting. I get so many DMs after shows now from girls. It's crazy. Oh, I'm sure. It's never of happened course. before. You're the one who gets, you're like at the perfect place, age, everything. You get to reap the benefits of this career. Like, isn't that like part of the rock star point? Like, what do you think Lenny Kravitz was doing when he was 34? Yeah, I'm not, so I wouldn't say. And I'm you don't care quite. if the girl's Jewish, do you? Oh, you do. I, here's the thing. Like, okay. depends so, what he's doing so, with her. So, so this is a very good point. <laughs> but also, I've also realized I've gotten so much pickier now because I only have a certain amount of time, and my first priority right now is just building my career, continuing right. to build it. So I'm not gonna let any like girls get in the way of that at all. So like, 
now it's I kind of feel now she's got to be really hot to yeah, get in yeah, the way. Yeah, they're, they're really hot, really cool. <laughs> Some combination of like really hot, really cool, like really attractive, really like talking to her. Like it's got to be the whole combo now. It used to be a pulse. A pulse. <laughs> that is like, if she could fog the mirror up, he's gonna start DMing with her for hours. Just hello, yes, no, a Thursday at three p.m. Perfect. Not 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 a problem. I'll meet you there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just you know like because 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 it's and I I used to have this in my act years ago. I said. When you're when you're a comedian, you're dating you're dating like a a girl who who isn't Jewish. She's blown away. Oh my God, you're a comedian. You make people feel great. You did it. It's such a wonderful. You're doing such great work. If it's a Jewish girl, the que- it's like, is that all you do? <laughs> is, is that? But no. But it's like you know, it's a whole. Act. It do, is. Do you yeah, remember the act? Course, Eric we're... remembers my act. Wait, what was the next I, joke I, to that? He goes. Then she wants to know. Oh, you, you. Oh, you live oil. down Mount uh, Cardio. No, no. You, you live downtown. You live downtown. But does your building have a doorman? Well, yeah. My, Steve, my roommate's a doorman <laughs> on Fifth Avenue. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, was yeah. the joke. That's right. Yeah. And then I'm also um, chief cardio. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> oh, right, right. Is that all you do? No, I'm chief cardio thoracic surgeon <laughs> over at Mount Sinai. Of course, that's all I do. But a girl who's not a Jewish is like, oh my god, that's so amazing. He's a com- he's a comedian. He's a comedian. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Jewish girl's like, he's a comedian, but but he has money. His parents have money. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. they want you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think, but that's the thing. I think you have to realize you just have to do it for, like, I've realized I'm really doing it for me. Like, I'm not doing it for girls. Like, I'm doing, I mean, that's, that's a, a good nice benefit. That's a nice benefit. Like 10 years in. I know. It's a nice benefit. <laughs> it's a nice benefit, but it's really just for me. So I, like, I, I, I think one thing I taught you is that, is that comedy is not a joke. No, it's not. It's, it's very not serious. a joke. It's and super serious. You, well, well, here's the thing, and this is like what Modi and Modi's helped me in so many ways because Modi's, I think, one of the few comics, and I only, you know, who really understand the business side of it, and like, you have to be foolish to believe that this is only an art. This is not exclusively an art. This is an art, and it's a business. And the people who I think go the furthest ultimately are the ones who understand that it's both. That it's a combination. So you used to, you know, and the thing is, you know. I think I came from a place where I was kind of a little insecure being like a better looking, more well put together person. Because in comedy, it's like they make you feel bad about that. They're like, oh, you're you're supposed to be you. You look like you're a winner. Like, we don't like that here. We like the underdogs. We like the losers. Like, we want to root for the underdog, whatever. And so I don't mean to say losers. I mean, like underdog, you know, whatever. So I think that made me gave me a complex. It made me feel like insecure. So I tried to almost play down the fact that like I didn't want to talk about living in a dormant building. I like felt insecure about that for a really long time. And you told me, so you, I fell into that and I was like kind of making a lot of self-deprecating like look at this like like terrible gig I'm doing with four people, you know whatever. And Modi said, "You got to stop doing that. People want to root for a winner. They want he goes he goes talk about the, the good things you're doing. Don't like put out there that you're doing this terrible gig or that you bombed or whatever. He's like, it's not good to put- no, It was during pandemic. He was like talking about how horrible that the, I said, just be, thank God, th- just push him. Thank God we're doing this and not doing that. It's just enough. And to ba- back to your thing, in comedy, you can't be too attractive. It's a big thing. People don't talk about it. You don't have, think about the biggest comedians in the world. There's nobody who's hot, who's doing a model shoot. And in, in, in LA, in LA, when you do the comedy clubs, all of a sudden you see some stunning guy or some stunning girl come up. And you're like, what the hell is she doing here? My modeling agency said if I have a sense of humor, uh. I, <laughs> I'll get better book. Because people want co- comedic comedic timing. I go, you don't have comedic timing. You have <laughs> cheekbones and thick hair and lips and eyes. And there's a, a camera can never take a bad picture of you. You don't have comedic. And, so, and plus, you know, I'll tell you one of the funniest things I have I, that I really realized that, that it was honed in mm-hmm. at the comedy cellar. Jeff Ross used to come in with um, John Mayer. John Mayer. John yeah, Mayer. Yeah, yeah, sure. John Mayer. Stunning. He's he's Very stunning. Looking, he's yeah. seven foot tall. Face. He could never wash it or or. Do, he's stunning. He's a big. And you know he's the biggest song guy and so talented. Talented. So talented. And he's hanging out with Jeff, and Jeff Ross looks like, like Jeff Ross. Um, <laughs> You know, bald and chubby and self-deprecating humor, but also then he does a little self-deprecating humor and then takes it out in the audience and says, you this, you that. And John Mayer was doing that. And it doesn't work. 
Yeah. You can say that this. You can say you're fat and your shirt's awful and you're this. When you're fat and your shirt's awful and you're the not when you are with seven Emmys and twelve Oscars and eighteen yeah. Tonys, then you can't. And a girlfriend that looks like she's on the cover of everything in the world, it doesn't work. But he also doesn't have the skills to do that yet. Like maybe if he did stand up for like five years or whatever. If he he'd had get the skills, he it. wouldn't be going that angle. Right. He'd be go. He'd be doing yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah. all the other ones do, which is just name dropping. Right. right I right, had right. lunch with uh, Elton John. John and he said da 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 and they're like oh my god Elton John ha ah. and the audience yeah. feels like they were at the lunch with him right that when a celebrity does stand up that's how they have like to a Judd do Apatow it. or something you went there not me yeah. so yes so it's just they need to know you can't be talking yeah. about how awful the guy in the front this is your girlfriend you could do better you can't yeah. do those types of joke when you're stunning and a big celebrity yeah i just you want know? to point out because i didn't want that to come off the wrong way i respect judd a lot uh but we're gonna you know, edit that we out. are gonna when we do the clip for this right. when we do the right. clip for this that's what we're keeping as like <laughs> eric newman did the and here's modi podcast oh and that's the clip we use <laughs> We get so mad at me. Yeah, no, Judd Apatow is amazing. Yeah, Judd yeah. Apatow is is uh, first of all, he did the show. Um, he did that, that the the thing, um, crashing. And yeah, which I was awesome. On it, which man. was amazing. It gave I an inside crashing. look to. And when he gets on stage, first of all, he's so amazing and so he gives it over. But he knows that that's the angle. He knows it. That's comedic timing. Yep. To talk about, he has a bit. He talks about when he went to lunch with Brad Pitt and. Was, was, you're, you're, the audience is like this, because it's it's Judd Apatow and Brad Pitt in their head. Not you know when, when you're like I'm at the gym, do, so now I have to picture you in the gym. They're imagining Brad Pitt and him yeah. having you know it's that yeah. kind of, and he takes it so seriously. Yeah. During the pandemic, um, people were doing super expensive shows on podcasts, on on not podcasts. I'm sorry, on um, on Zoom, super expensive Zoom shows with huge celebrities. I was on one. That had Judd Apatow, Seth Meyer, uh, um, Sarah Silverman, John Mulaney, on the same, do you know, I know, the same one. I was telling, and they kept me on to open, and then say you stay on in case one of them drops off or does, so we can just put you keep going. Judd Apatow took it so seriously. He had it, and he had material written down. He was like doing jokes, and and then. What was fun was they put him on with Seth Meyers, somebody else, and they were talking about it, and he was like, he really took it so seriously. Yeah. He was writing jokes for this event. This is Judd Apatow. Well, it was, it was very important to him to be respected in the comedy community, Judd Apatow. It was like something that was like, it was one of his goals, I think, his main goal maybe. Like well, I got, think it's where he came out of too. Yeah, like yep. he yeah. started with Gary Shandling when he was like 15 years old. Yeah, interviewing like, everybody mm -hmm. and just, you know. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, um, he was amazing. I, 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 I don't know when we started. I'm sorry. I don't want to. We're okay. We started at uh, twelve. I think right around twelve twenty. Twelve twenty. Okay. All right. Um, How did you guys meet? At the comedy. He's not gonna remember, but oh. it meant more to me. Oh. Um, because <laughs> no, because a year ago I remember I brought this up to you and you were like, oh yeah, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so how, how did we meet? I'll tell you how we met. So, uh, 2012 at the comic strip, JR was booking. Okay. And you were doing your annual Christmas Eve show. Yeah. Two shows. And I begged to be on. <laughs> I like, I said, because I already knew you and knew you were like just, I loved watching you. So I was like, um, I was like, could you just give me like five minutes or something? And I think he goes, well, let me run it by Modi. And I don't think you had an opener. So you were like, okay, like I'll take a, ch you know, whatever. And then I guess you liked me and we became friends. That's and how it began? So, yeah. Okay. I 2012. And I did it for you every year. And then, you know. That's now awesome. That's yeah. such a great story. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. Um, Modi's like, I was a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> no, no, I'm a nice guy. guy. Modi gives tough love. But you know, Modi, you know, Modi cares. Like, that's like, you have that Israeli thing, you know? Like, it's, it's, Sabra. it's, it's my, yeah. it's my, it's my dad's side. My uncle got who's like my second dad. It's the same way. It's just, it's just, you know, you don't get a compliment easily, but... When you do, it's worth no. it. Yeah, exactly. But, you no, know, it's honest. But that's too. how Esty... Yeah. It's the same way. Esty has that same mentality, and that's, you know, that's sort of why people gravitate towards her, and Modi's got that same thing. Um, you lately have been wearing... I, I, I don't know if people know this. I'm, I love watches. I am obsessed with watches. I know all the different types of watches, and 
how much they're worth and if you can get them and if you can't get them. I, I love watches. And out of nowhere, like Eric pulls up with like the hardest watch you can get on the market. The Audemars Piguet watch. Can't wait to say this. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And I, first of all, look. So he walks into the room pretending like it's not even on his hand. Uh-huh. And I'm looking at the watch and I'm like, let me see the watch <laughs> right now. And it's either real or it's such a good fake. It's real. And I got it checked with the jeweler. You didn't. I, I did. It's I real. I love this. This is amazing. It's real. <laughs> it's real? I went to a jeweler. Which jeweler? On. I don't know the he place. went to the it's guy like that does the shoe shine, the haircut, no. and changes the battery. It's that big jeweler place on 48th and 6th or whatever, 46th and 6th. It's a big jeweler place. Okay, on okay. Cartier? No, 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 no. I, I, didn't go to, I didn't go to one of those. I went to... No, you had to go to Adamar Piguet and, and get... And get. Oh, so, it's go real. so it's real. So it's real. A jeweler told me it was 100% real. So did you, are you buying it from whoever you took it? Because there's a story behind he's, it. He's let me... Ugh. I have a friend who's basically asked me for 19 million favors a friend from childhood he's my one of my best friends he's asked me for 19 million favors over the years and he's always doing some shady form of something or whatever and i've I've helped him with rent and i've given him money for this and i helped him with his engagement ring and who should be getting married if they can't afford their own engagement ring but um but and all this stuff so finally he, he always has something up his sleeve like hey let me try to make you happy or whatever so he gets this watch. I don't exactly know how. It's weird. I love it. Wow, that. that's I not ex- good. I don't know exactly that's not how. Good. I don't know exactly how. He's not doing anything like like illegal, but oh, no, he might be not, dealing no. with people who are doing things. Like, I don't know. Anyway, maybe, maybe. So he gives me this watch, and he goes, "Hey, I basically let him borrow like fifteen hundred dollars recently." And he goes, uh, "He goes, he, he goes, hold on to this watch for a while, whatever. It'll make you happy." Blah 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 blah. So anyway, so I think I'm gonna end up buying it from now that I know it's real. I think I'm gonna end up just giving him like. I don't know. It's probably worth twenty grand. Or something it's like worth that. right. On, it's it's not even that it's worth that. You can't get it. It's hard to get. It, right no now. one can get that watch. That's the yeah. the hardest watch. That's the Why? watch that everybody yeah. wants to buy. There in the Jewish world, I, I, this is just the Jewish world. But whenever uh, a bride and groom get married, it's tradition that the father of the bride buys the groom a watch. And that's the number one watch people want, Just, and you cannot get it. I get probably two to three compliments a night when I'm at the cellar on it. Like, I get off stage, and, you know, people be like, oh, my God, how do you have that? Like, like that kind of thing. They, they, they know it. A watch is it. so important. People don't understand it. So it's, 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 yeah. You can wear a good watch and come disheveled and messed up, but you, for women, it's a Birkin bag. If I was a woman, I would always have a Birkin bag. No, I would just always a Chanel put a Bir- bag or something. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, you can't schwep around a Birkin on like ev- it's hard to carry. It's like wow, not convenient. Wow, wow. Know, that's let's true. let's turn the focus over here for <laughs> a minute. Wow. wow, wow. <laughs> she, first of all, you should know she this is the first time she came in with sleeves. She's I didn't realize I was coming to like a modern orthodox I, tempo every time I'm coming. Those to of you who are podcast. watching this, well, uh, those of you who get this reference, please enjoy it. She looks like she's taping Sha Na Na. <laughs> I don't get it. What's I know you Sha-na-na? don't. Neither one. You're both too, way too young. There was a show, Sha Na Na, and, and there's like, it was, this, it was like a 50s show, and there was a guy, Bowser, boom, 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 and he like always that. with a sleeveless. Oh, I love that. I, Google it. Google it, Sha Na Na. But a Birkin bag, ju- and, and a used Birkin bag, filthy and dirty, and you throw it everywhere. That's okay. That That's style. Better. Not kept in a velvet bag in your cl- yeah. d- sh- Bang it yeah, down. I was in one time, I was in the south of France. Cause that's how I roll, <laughs> um, and we got to this event, to this place where there was a, it was a, a restaurant on the beach, and the most beautiful. It's called what's it? Club? What is it? Club Fifty Five, and it's you can't get a table. The only way we got a table was because the people who are the agents for the yacht got us a table, and there's no table. It's like a table with a thing, and then you're in the sand. And you see these the high high end women of France showing up with their br- just dropping it in the sand. I love it's that. It's so chic. That's oh amazing. My God. It's so chic. The fact that you're saying Chanel bag. The problem with the Chanel bag is you can get a Chanel bag. You can get a you Chanel. You can get bag. a Birkin bag too. You cannot. I want. I have friends who have closets filled with Birkin bags. Ask them for one. I she pay would, them. She wouldn't care. She would give me. So she take wouldn't. it. Take I don't, it. I don't care. I don't. Take By the way, it. Modi it's, literally goes. I see his Instagram and everything, and I hear and he sends me pictures or whatever of just the most gorgeous places on planet yeah, Earth yeah. to go do stand up in a lot yeah, of the yeah, time. It's amazing. Yeah, And then he takes me to the bungalow colonies. <laughs> <in the past laughs> I'm like, are you serious right now, dude? Like, 
Wait, I never took you any place fancy no, and nice. No, never. This is the first time we're going to be going to nice places. Wait. The, yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, no. I've taken you on good gigs. No, I'm not saying the gigs aren't good. I'm no, saying the I'm, place the we place go is, to. No, the gigs are always he good. He wants if I'm bringing to go to the south of I France I want to go to that you. place. I want to go to Club 55. No, Israel, Israel, and I performed in Europe for different stuff, like private events. Yeah, but yeah. they're not flying an opening right, right, act right. over there. Right, they're, right. They're, they're barely flying me out there. But, um, all right, so let's... Uh, you now are at a place where when a young comic calls up and says, hey, I'm, I want to do stand-up, I think it's in me, and this and that, and I have no idea where all the opening stuff is. Well, that's why I remember after your Stand Up New York show the other night. Yeah. Made me laugh because it was so typical Modi what happened. What it, happened? It, some woman comes up to me, very not beautiful. She had amazing work done. She had makeup on, good hair. Mm -hmm. And she comes up and goes, I am thinking of doing stand up and I'm, where would I? I wouldn't even know where to tell her to begin. I don't know what rooms are the are the open mic rooms or where. So I said, I diverted to go, you should speak to Eric about that. You should definitely speak to her. And even Eric clocked it. It was just, she was just a drop, a click off. She was off. But but it was funny. It made me laugh because she came up to me and she goes, hey, I just asked Modi uh, about starting stand-up. And I go, let me guess. He told you to come to me. And she goes, yeah. Like I a hundred percent. Well, the thing is, is like, well, I, I'm more your past. Like, I'm starting to get past that. Where I'm like, I don't even know because all the hot rooms when I started are not are either closed down or they've shifted producers or whatever. Right? People keep growing in this business, and hopefully they get better opportunities. Right. Hopefully, if you're running a bar show in year one of comedy, you're not still running that same bar show year eight of comedy. Hopefully you've moved past that, right? So all the producers and stuff, like now we're wor I'm working at a level with like the best comedians in the world. So like I actually don't know those like two year comics who run a bar show in the East Village. So I can't really tell you, I don't know what the popular mics are. I don't, I mean, I could give a little guidance, but not, not as much as I used to. And that's so. a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. I'm, yeah. I'm so I thought you still n like had your uh, you knew people in that no, world. No, no, no. I do, I do, and I understand. Like I'm way more, probably way more well versed in it than you are at this point. But but yeah, I can't. I would just say like people ask me like, what do you do? Like what should I do? I want to start stand up. What should I do? I just say like I don't know. Like just do every mic and try to run a bar show or try to run a show at a club and like work with other comedians and that's all you could do. There's no there's no manual for this. Like yeah. there really isn't. They're really you have to write jokes and you have to, and again, yeah. but one of the best things you said today on the podcast was during the, the 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 quarantine, you saw who was committed. Yeah, who was like, "Ugh, this is my out out of comedy," and I have the excuse of it was quarantine. I was doing really great, and I had this happening and that happening, and and but but the ones that stuck with it were yeah. um w that was it. They, they and the other thing, just piggybacking off of that, like I understand if you don't if you want to quit. Like when people quit, I get it. It's a completely, it's something that completely takes over your life and you have, to, in order to get any success in it, you have to be 100% in, 100, not 99. So if you're not willing to do that, there's almost no reason to pursue it. Exactly. So if you wanna quit, I get it. But if you wanna stay in, stay in, do yeah. it. Okay, so another thing I do on this podcast, mm -hmm. I don't do those little um, vin 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 vignettes. 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 And yet, so this yeah. and that, and we're gonna put on. I ask one question, mm -hmm. okay? And the question is, who is your rabbi? And rabbi means teacher, guru, someone you look up to. Uh, who's your mm -hmm. the person you go to with a problem? With a who's your rabbi? Who's your? The problem is, is that it's so hard to answer because I go through to different people for different issues, right? So. Do you have to pick one? It's a very good question. What you just said was very good because it. Um, do you go to the sa to different people when you have the same question? So in other words, that means you're looking for an a different answer. Is who is yes? So, so whatever, for whatever the topic is, one who is who are the people that you'd go to? I'll name a few people. Can I have a couple okay. multiple rabbis? People have multiple rabbis, right? I'm gonna let it go this time. Okay. But yes. <laughs> so I go to I go to my uncle Gadi, my Israeli uncle, my dad's brother, for a lot of big life decisions. Um, he's really smart, and super, um, like there to answer anything I need. Is he like me? Like he doesn't just yeah, give yeah, it, yeah. Get, just no. doesn't like to pander to whatever. No, 
<laughs> no bullshit at all. Okay. Uh, calls me an idiot five times a conversation. Uh, I, I like, like him guy. very much. <laughs> I like this. This um, is very good where this is yeah. going. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like some people, like some people are very sensitive to it. Like when you call me a moron or whatever, I I start thinking about him. Like I don't get sensitive. I'm just like maybe I'm being a moron. Right. Um, that's how I am. You know, because I grew up in this environment with with grandparents. Like you know, with with your like facade and your attitude. Same thing with my uncle. He's the same way. Okay. I like so. it. I want people to give it to me straight. I don't want to. I want to know what I'm doing wrong. So um, I go to him a lot with anything like business related to comedy. I go to you, um, and uh, and and chime in. Um, I don't go to him, but he'll just chime in <laughs> with, uh, with stuff. You, you don't have to go to him. He'll just chime <laughs> it right out. Here's some advice that nobody asked for. <laughs> Would you shut your mouth? <laughs> chime in. Um, but yeah, and then there's other just there's other people like I I really um, have gotten like closer with Liz at the cellar, so I I come to her with a lot of stuff like stand up related and whatever. So um, yeah, I mean I just there's there's a bunch of people, but but the, I've gotten much more selective about who I go to. People understand, but the staff at the comedy cellar, if you're working there every single night, that's the best people to go to because they see your act. The wait staff, mm -hmm. the managers, Steve, the st Steve. St even Steve. Steve Even knows Steve, everything. outdoor Steve, Steve uh, he he. They see your act every single day, and they they know what you. Manny and Esty gave me the. It's, I used to do what you do, and here's. Uh, you're not in a in an, an arena. You're you're not in an arena. You're not at a, at a at a boxing match, and here's Modi. And don't ever if I ever ever hear you say, the great Modi. <laughs> I'm going to literally beat you with the pole from the stage because it sounds like here's a magician, the great Modi. <laughs> uh, he literally used to say that. Oh, awful, awful. Um, um, but that's, yeah, that's definitely great for advice. Okay, so that's a good, I, I'll take the answer. Yeah. And the one thing I think I, I like from this podcast is the fact that we, the, my coining of um, comedy is not a joke. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And it's not just the it. money. It's not just the money. It's you have to understand spiritually there's somebody in that audience. That the reason you're on that stage is not because you got past and you got there's somebody in that audience that just went through hell, that just went through losing a family member, just found out they have cancer, God forbid. Just to and you, for for whatever amount of time you're in front of them, you're taking that you're taking them out of it. It's 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 not a joke. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a real thing that you have to do. And, yeah, um, and you are also a starting out comedian. You keep that in the back of your head. No, that's incredible. Yeah. That real. I mean, that's a really beautiful and profound sentiment. Really. And I remember serious. Alex. I remember Alex Edelman one time opened for me for a uh, for a Christmas show, and he bombed. And it was <laughs> it was in a synagogue. It was it was a hot bomb. It was a hot bomb. <laughs> And he's genius. He's a genius writer. He genius. Is. He's amazing. Yeah, he's really good. And I'm blown away when I watch his show. But he bombed. <laughs> but he saw me doing my meditation and my writing before the show. And he was like, huh. Huh. That's a thing. Okay. Um, okay. Pitch whatever it is you're doing. Sell it. Let's go. Your TikToks, your Instagram. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Look at the camera and do it. Okay. I'm growing my social media fan base. I've got a lot of touring coming up. Uh, I really appreciate um, whoever's watching that's followed me and followed my career and shared my clips and everything. And uh, we have a lot going on. I'm actually filming. Uh, this was announced. This not announced yet, but I found out this week. I'm filming um, a third album slash special at the Comedy Cellar at McDougal Street uh, in October. Amazing. which uh, I'm really excited about. Where can they find you on social media? Uh, at I'm Eric Newman, at I am E-R-I-C-N-E-U-M-A-N-N. -E -N. Um, that's on Instagram, and then just add, oh, both of them on TikTok now, um, at I'm Eric Newman. At TikTok, um, that's great, that's great. And I am, um, I, well, how about you? What about you? You can just find me through you or Eric if you want to. I'm out there, Perry L. Ashen Brand. Anybody who wants to find me can find me. Okay, let's take two on that. <laughs> let's, 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 let's do it again. And, it's okay. and now, do it like you want them to follow <laughs> you. I'm Periel at the worst last name ever, too. <laughs> As if her first name wasn't the hardest <laughs> thing to figure out and spell. <laughs> it's the last name gives it to you even worse. 
pitch whatever you're doing. You're ama- she's a producer of the she's the producer of one of the biggest not the biggest but an amazing podcast. Thank yeah. you. Great filmed podcast. at the Comedy Cellar, which has nothing to do about comedy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just political opinions <laughs> of the owner and uh you've been killing it on that and you're doing stand up and you're fun and you've been do- producing shows yeah. and so give uh, it over Periel Ashen Brand on Instagram that's it Periel and you I can look through my Instagram I'm, I'm doing your show though coming up yes, you have a great t- Tuesday night you. show yeah. yeah wow I didn't yeah. see that happen I thought you'd kill it with the what you're pushing I am Modi I am on uh, Instagram, which is my, my main thing, which is uh, M-O-D-I underscore live, L-I-V-E, or modilive.com. Uh, tour informations are going to be on that, and uh, shows are, as of now, and they're, God willing, will stay in Atlanta, Houston, um, Port Washington, Long Island, and uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, and... Chicago, Skokie, Chicago. Uh, get tickets. Let your friends know. Pass it on to your friends that live in those cities. Um, this podcast. Let people know. 750 downloads already. We announced it only on Thursday. Amazing. So people, I, 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 what did I tell them? 750 downloads and 3,000 comments. <laughs> People's opinions about the 750 people who are listening to it. <laughs> um Please, and just stay in touch. Thank you all very, very much for, uh, for, for tuning in, downloading, and listening to it. And Eric, thank you so much. Thanks, I, I swear to you, I wish you my, my prayerful wishes for your success, thank both you. of you, but thank you. definitely for you. Thank you very much, <laughs> and uh, get, getting ready for the new Jewish year. And um, we have amazing, an amazing, amazing guest coming up next episode. And that's it. Thank you. And thank you to Gotham Podcast Studios.